Father, Abba Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test the gospel of the lord What is the meaning of gospel? We say it all the time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Evangelium, evangelium in Greek, the good news. When last did you listen to a good news? When last did you hear a good news? Not on television, please. Not on the social media. No. Not even sometimes when you want to catch up with friends and family. No. Because there, sometimes, there is so much hidden competition. People are only flattering themselves and competing on the news about themselves. The good news is this, that Jesus, that God spoke to Jonah and made him realize that you, my brothers and sisters, that me, myself, I am worth much more than that tree that tree that was a shade for Jonah, but God let the worm conceal it so that Jonah can know that the people of Nineveh are much more important in God's eyes than that tree. That's why he's merciful and gracious. So can you imagine a prophet who has been sent to preach and this prophet himself does not even believe truly in the words that he said. He does not even believe that his word is not his and so because the word is not his that word has power to effect change in the life of people. Do you know what that is? That is the greatest crisis. That a priest, I can stand here and preach the word of God, the word that should produce change, the word that should produce repentance, the word that should produce life changing transformation, the word that should bring God's mercy to people, and yet I do not even. Don't you see the calamitous crisis? And it is very frequent. It is very frequent that it does happen. That as a priest, as a father to God's people, I may preach the word of God. I'm not under the authority of that word. I don't believe in the moral conviction, in the supernatural reality of that word. If I do not believe 
If I'm not convinced that my word, the word of God that has been disposed to my soul, to my heart, to communicate to God's people, the word that will bring life to them, the word that will bring hope to them, and I do not believe it. How can that word transform? How can that word itself change the epicenter and the people, the souls? And listen to that word. That word definitely may God just go empty. But God allows a situation where Jonah himself did not believe the word he spoke. He said, 70, 40 days, and Nineveh will come down. But God made it possible that even the act of, of those words, the infinitesimal of those words, change the soul of those people. Because in Isaiah 50, 10 to 11, God said, my word will not come back empty. My word will carry out what it was meant to carry out. My word is not going to be effective because my minister is not effective or my minister does not even want to believe. So the word has power beyond me. What a God. Because he loves you. Because he's merciful. Because he's gracious. And God wants to convert the heart of the priest, the preacher of the word. That is why he is also, also merciful to Jonah. And made sure that he showed Jonah the stupidity of his thoughts. And put this tree for him. <laughs> and he hid under it because the sun was scorching. And he was under the shade with protection. And God sent a worm to devour. So the guy is angry. That guy is a very funny character. <laughs> He's angry. What is this? The guy said, Did you put that tree there? No, of course not. Uh -huh. <laughs> so why are you angry? See, I'm angry enough to, 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 to die. To die in a mile like that. You didn't put it there. I put it there to give you shade. But now one has consumed it. Just to tell you, if you are angry because of a tree, a plant that you didn't put there, how much more am I looking at a hundred and thousand people, millions of people in Nineveh who do not know their right from their left? <laughs> who do not know wrong and right? Do you see the situation in our world today? Huh? Right and wrong. How many people know it? People say, suit yourself. <laughs> Is it not true? Whatever you like, whatever you like, do it, whatever you like. It has become a, oh, an opinion. And if you do not go with that, people scorn you. People don't want to be around you. You know, in many places, people do not want to sit around people who make them think deeper. So I know why my homily sometimes can be challenging. <laughs> but that's the only way. The only way is truth, not opinions. Opinions is moral relativism. Moral relativism causes a kind of scandal, causes a kind of poison, causes a lot of malice, causes people to die instrumentally because the truth is not unveiled to them. The world is dying today for want of truth. St. Catherine of Siena, he said, speak as if you had a million tongues. Only truth will heal our world. Truth only will save the world, not moral duplicity, not a confusion, not knowing whether it is a boy or a girl. Not knowing whether what the Lord instituted in the commands of God about life, confusion about what is the foundation and the institution of family. No, we shouldn't be confused about that. Those are too basic and basic even to the world of science. And those who champion science are those who do not even know science. 
science takes its root from the Greek word gnosis. Gnosis is knowledge. The same root word where word comes from. The word is Jesus Christ. Science starts from Jesus. The word of truth is in Jesus. Science, the word of truth, everything is not parallel. <laughs> it's not parallel. No, they have the same source. The greatest, greatest scientist, Isaac Newton, they knew that there is something else that goes beyond science. They found it out in the laboratory that the lab does not offer the complete truth. And yet today, I live in a world where people say, I believe in the science. When they say so, they are saying that this is not about God. That is evil. I know it. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> for revealing your word. The truth of yourself to us. Happy are your eyes for the hear. We'll see what they see. Happy are your ears for the hear what they hear. Because princes and kings long to hear this, but they do not. Only children, only the childlike can see it. Today we are feeding our, our family, our children with junk. We are feeding them with the menu that will not please. The menu that will not save. And that's why. What's that? Uh, the ice cream corner there? Why this? Can continue to exist for years and it will continue to have clients because why this? Insists on the continued giving of the same menu. And people love that menu. The church has abandoned her menu. Her menu is truth. Let us rise and pray. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Pray for him that the Holy Father will continue to insist only on truth, the truth of the Word of God, the truth that comes from the heart, the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our bishops all over the world. Bishops who have been installed and been given the sacred rings and the mitre and the crozier to lead the flock based on truth, to scare away hyenas and dangerous animals from the flock, to protect the flock from invading errors, scandals, and heresies. Train and ambitions, particularly our own bishop, Bishop Thomas Zinkul, we have the heart of Jesus, the heart of the paraclete, to preach, preaching of truth that saves, truth that defends, truth that grants immunity to the sacred flock that they give it to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our priests, priests who have been called to be friends of the bridegroom. Friends of the bridegroom, close to the bridegroom, living in the embrace of the heart of the bridegroom. The bridegroom, the one who insists on truth, is the way, the truth, and the life, who preaches the word of life. Pray that we ourselves will be so cornered by the Holy Spirit that we cannot do anything else but to lead our people into the fortress of sanctification. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for you, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters. Pray that as you continue to seek, to love, to know, and to serve the Lord, you will open your heart to His mercy and graciousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord pray for Daniel and Virginia Suskos for whom we celebrate this month. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord pray that St. Bruno, who we celebrate, a great Catholic monk, great, great, silent 
silence, Bruno, will help us to dig in, dig in, in silence, to listen to the promptings and the speaking and the speech and the revelations of the Holy Spirit in our times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Father in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your name brings us joy. Your name tears down the embers of hate and division. Your name saves. Your name destroys all the fortress of evil. Your name pierces the skies. Your name opens the door to all graces from the heavenly throne. May your name continue to be holy in our lives forever and ever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.